Hello students, today I am going to read out the poem entitled Touch, composed by Meena Kandasamy. Meena Kandasamy is a Dalit poet, very young, and she has changed the idioms of poetry writing in modern Indian English writings. Let me mention some of the facts about her writing and what she thinks about her writings and about herself. She is Chennai based poet, fiction writer and translator. Her first book, Touch, was published in 2006. Two of her poems have been, have won prizes in All India Poetry competitions. Her poetry has been published in various journals including the little magazine Kavya Bharati, Indian Horizons, Muse India and the quarterly literary review Singapore. She edited the Dalit a bi-monthly alternative English magazine of Dalit Media Network in its first year of publication from 2001 to 2002. Kandasamy's translations include the writings and speeches of the Dalit Panther of India. Dalit Panther uh, is a movement like uh, Black Panther in USA it was. It's a movement of resistance to caste atrocity by means of cultural resistance. And the poetry and fable of Tamil Ilm poet Kasi Anandan. She is one of the 20, she is one of the 21 short fiction writers from South Asia featured in an anthology published by Juban, New Delhi. At present, she is working on her doctorate on caste in the Indian languages, Indian language classroom. Just look at the topic of her PhD, of her research or doctorate is <clears throat> caste in the Indian language classroom. Uh, now, Kandaswami regards her writings as a process of coming up to terms with her identity, her womanness, Tamilness, and low outcastness, labels that she wears with pride. So she is proud of uh, the label outcastness, not ashamed of it. So that dimension is important for us to understand what Dalit means in uh, Indian Dalit writings. She knew, she says, that my gender, language and castlessness were not anything that I had to be ashamed of. I wrote poetry, very well aware of who I was, but I was also sure of how I wanted to be seen. I wanted to be taken on my own terms. I wanted to be 
totally bare and intentionally exposed to the world through my writings. I wanted it to be my rebellion against the world. It meant, she adds, consciously deciding that she wasn't interested in winning acceptance or admiration or awards. This is important in knowing her idea of what a poet is and what poetry is. Aware <clears throat> that the site of all subjugation is at first at the level of language, Kandaswami believes that political poetry has the pressing responsibility to ensure that language is not at the mercy of the oppressors. She raises the question of language and language is one of the most important areas of understanding colonialism, post-colonialism, hegemony and all processes of Adri. I will add to this later after I have read this read out this poem. The ways of the status quo are insidious, insidious. However, and Kandasami realizes that a politically conscious poet has to be true to herself in order to be a genuine voice of dissent and resistance. So here we may underline her advocacy of political poetry, political consciousness. So for her, politics is not a neutral term. It is not something like middle class will distance it from. She wants to be a poet who is politically conscious of what she writes and what messages she delivers. When we look at her points in the collection, the first collection touch, all the points, look at the, if you look, if you look at the titles, I will circulate some of those points for you to read. Look at the titles and the content. Her sentences, her expressions, her idioms are like rainbow. That means she does not let the poetry suffer from ambiguities. She makes her statement very clear. It is true, we may need some time to think about what she writes, but when we have paid full attention, we would realize that the message is very clear and that would be that example we would see in the poem Touch. Her work as the editor of a Dalit magazine and her association with the Dalit Panthers of India, which was a militant activist Dalit organization, has further honed her awareness of what it means to be a woman in a caste-ridden nation. A woman in a caste-ridden nation. So this distinction or this uh, inverted commas uh, would be important, is important for us because she is not only a woman but also a low caste woman. So she wants to differentiate here that 
her womanhood should not be generalized but it should be seen in the hierarchy of the womanhood this the result poetry that arises not out of mere reading but out of active engagement so another definition of poetry not it arises not out of reading but out of active engagement and that lets that tells us about her activism so she is a writer as well as an activist who is also engaged in the real world in challenging what she talks about in her works in her writing given her impassioned politics it is perhaps not surprising that she has that she wrote her first love poem only 2 years after she started writing her angry militant verse so this is the division her love poems then her angry poems militant poems the poems in this edition reveal more than militant rage however there is fierce and exuberant wit and word play which makes one look forward to more of kandasamy's works in the years to come and bibliography a touch this is uh, 2006 then miss militancy uh, was 2010 and this poem will provoke you is an ebook that came in 2014 and then uh, her critically acclaimed novel about the 1968 kilwe na mani massacre of 44 dalit agricultural laborers in tanjore the novel is entitled the gypsy goddess and uh, so look at uh, i mean if after having heard of introduction about meena kandasami what we notice that she is a distinct voice in modern indian writings in english or indian english writing now it's important to locate her in uh the poetry that is written in english in india let us say last 100 years but that we do when we talk about entire unit all the poems put together and then we locate various themes and also see how we can connect these poems to the larger structure of nation the lar larger structure of colonialism post coloniality that is post modern india and language issue and at the same time different movements literary movements in india and then there are many other factors for example globalization and uh, political regimes caste and so and so forth so we will look at all the points that are within this unit from this uh, point of view or from these perspectives but what we are going to do we would first select words phrases or themes from each of these poems to put them together to see how we can build our context out of these texts but at the same time our awareness of the context our understanding of the background uh, reading another unit 
will help us in picking up these uh, these phrases or these uh, instances so unless we have the tools ready with us we will not be able to actually pick up those areas which can be put as a network to help us understand post-coloniality or larger issues which are the objectives of this paper.